welcome back to C2 Novel and Vocab Week 13! Woo! And if you're watching this video, that means you finished with your midterm exam. Congratulations! I'm sure it was very difficult, but if it was easy, good job. If it was hard, I'm sure you did fine. But anywho, let's get started with our video. So hello! Hi! My name is Miss Kimberly, and the goal of our session in this video is to have students understand each word in our vocabulary workbook and to be cognizant of some phrases from our novel that may be difficult for us to understand. And I'll be here as your guide to help you through it all. If you've already watched my videos, go ahead and skip to the first word, but if this is your first video, stay and listen. So today's agenda, we'll be going over week 13 vocabulary, go over extra example sentences, and in our next video, you'll go over difficult phrases from our novel. And after both videos, you will have to review and self-study. But why are we doing this? We're going over week 13 vocabulary to help with your vocabulary acquisition by learning the definition, synonym, antonym, and part of speech of the word, this can significantly, which means greatly, improve your reading comprehension and enhance contextual usage. Next, we'll be going over extra example sentences, and this is to help with your writing variation. By looking at a variety of example sentences with one specific vocabulary word, students can learn how to use the word in different sentence structures and ultimately make your writing more interesting. So now, without further ado, the intro is done. If you haven't already, please go ahead and get your vocabulary workbook and turn to week 13, which is on page 108. 108. Go, go, go. Everybody ready? <clears throat> Number one, our word is effective. Everyone say effective. The synonym is successful, and the antonym is ineffective. This prefix here with the I-N, it shows us that it is the opposite, not, so not effective. But what does that mean? So effective is an adjective, and the definition says producing the result that is wanted or intended. So basically, getting your goal, getting the end result because of what you've done. From our TED Talks, it says, the medicine is not making the patient better. We need to find one that is more effective, meaning we need to find a medicine that works and meets our goal. <clears throat> Let's read the example. One, two, three. Offering discounts is an effective strategy for companies to increase sales. That's a very smart idea. In order to get more customers to come and buy stuff, the effective strategy is to give some discounts. 50% off for that shirt. <laughs> Here, please make sure that you rewrite the example sentence, the one that we just read together, hopefully. And let's continue. Over here, it says, repeated practice is an effective way to learn a new skill. So this is how I also learned Korean. Mm, big shocker. Yes, Miss Kimberly can speak Korean. I practiced a lot. So what I would do, I would repeat over and over and over again. I'm reading a book. I'll read that page maybe like a hundred times so that I know everything about that page and then move on and so forth. So that is an effective way because it allows me to get my end goal, which is to learn a different language. Next, it says wearing sunscreen is effective at Preventing sunburn. <gasps> yes, so we all go outside during the summer, or you should still wear it now. But whenever we're out in the sun, we should wear some sunscreen, right? SPF 50 or above or more or less, it doesn't matter. Um, but wearing that and putting it on is effective at preventing sunburn so that I don't get red or tan. Very good. Next one, number two, everyone say income income and the synonym is salary and the part of speech is a noun 
It means money that is earned from doing work. So your parents, if they go out to work, then they will get an income, which is their salary, the money that they get from their job. In our TED Talks book, it says the average income is less than $500 a year. Oh, that's very low. If I got $500 a year, that'd be almost getting $1 and something, $1 and some change a day. Mm. Let's read the example together. One, two, three. After finding a job and earning an income, I opened a savings account. Ooh, that's very smart to always open a savings account so that you put your some or some of your income or parts or a percentage a little bit of your income into that savings account so you, that you don't touch it, you don't spend it, and you save it for later. Let's look here. It says he donates part of his income to charity. Mm, what a nice person. So say maybe there's like a dog shelter or a cat shelter that and they need money. So this man, this imaginary man, he donates part of his income to that shelter. How nice. Next one, it says they saved a portion of their income every month. Yes, I also save a portion of my income every month and I put it away in my pay bank and I don't touch it. Even if I want to buy that new snack, I don't touch that saving account. Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> Number three, everyone say measure. Measure. The synonym is scale and the part of speech is a noun. It means the act or the process of finding the size, quantity, or degree of something. So how big or small, or how much, so on and so forth. You were measuring it. Here, I just use the word as a verb. But here in our test, we must make sure that we think of measure as a noun. So in our TED Talks, it says, this test is a measure of how well the students have learned the material. Usually your test scores also provide a good measure of how well you've understood the material that you've learned in class. Um, example, let's read together. One, two, three. Tests are conducted as a measure to find out the effectiveness of the vaccine. So say that we got a test, or no, not a test. Say that we have a shot, a vaccine. And we have to then take a test to see if that shot actually worked or if it didn't work as a measure. Down here, it says temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is, right? We all usually look at the temperature. That is the measure of the weather of how hot or cold it is. Next one, it says the success of a project is often a measure of teamwork. So a lot of people say you must have good teamwork in order to have a good project, right? We must all work together nicely and respectfully. Number four, everyone say profit. Profit. The synonym is gain and the antonym is loss. The part of speech is a noun and the definition says money that is made after all the costs and expenses are paid. So say that you have a business and you get all this money, right, from selling, I don't know, let's say lemonade. But then we needed to buy the lemons, we needed to buy the water, we needed to buy the cups, right? After all that money is paid off, the leftover money would be our profit, how much we actually made. In our TED Talks, it says, we bought the building for $30,000 and sold it for $45,000. So we made a 50% profit. Meaning how much profit do you think they made then? 45 minus 30 equals $15,000. That's a lot of money. Next one, example. Let's read together. One, two, three. The company made a huge profit after successfully launching a new item. So maybe the company made new highlighters that can glow in the dark and then after that they made a huge profit just an idea over here it says the bakery made a big profit during the holiday season because usually during the holiday season a lot of people buy cookies or bread 
or things of that sort to give to other people. So they made a bigger profit during that time. Next, it says, after Samsung introduced the newest phone technology, their profit increased. Yes, with Samsung phones these days, we have like AI in it. It's so cool. And I think their profit has increased because a lot of people started buying Samsung phones. But I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote, on, don't quote me on that. So let's move on out of TED Talks and now into our novel words. Number five, the word is inch. Not the inch that we measure, like centimeters, but inches. Here we're talking about a different thing. We're talking about inch as a verb. The synonym here is creep. And it's a verb and it means to move very slowly. To inch, inch, inch. So imagine something inching. Usually we would say a worm. Worm inches. So they go a little bit, a little bit, a little bit by one inch. In our book it says, she inched her way toward him, then kicked him with her bare foot. Meaning she slowly got closer and then poof, kicked him. <laughs> Example, let's read together. One, two, three. Slowly, I began to inch toward the edge and wondered how I would cross it. Also, this sentence is about this picture. She got towards the edge of the cliff and then she's like, oh my goodness, how am I going to jump over? <laughs> let's look down here. It says the line at the amusement park inched forward, but we still had to wait one more hour for the ride. <gasps> this always happens to me when I go to the amusement park, and I don't go often. But there's always a long line, and it does not move. Like, I cannot move and step very well. I just go, eep. We just inch forward. One person. And then we have to wait a little long time again inch a little bit forward again. Mm. Next line. It says, he inched toward the door, trying not to make a sound. <gasps> so maybe we just put the baby down, the baby's sleeping, but we now have to inch towards the door, try to get away from the, get out of the room, but also not wake up the baby. Next one, number six, everyone say, squirrel away. Squirrel away. Are we talking about actual live squirrel animals here? No. The synonym is save and the antonym is spend. It's a phrasal verb here because it's to squirrel away. And it means to hide or store something, especially money, in order to use it in the future. So it's kind of like just putting something away so that we can use it later. Um, in our book it says, Jessie always had money squirreled away in her lockbox. Yes, I wish I had money squirreled away in my lockbox, but now my money is in my savings account. <laughs> Example, let's read together. One, two, three. He decided to squirrel away half of his allowance every month to save money. Long time ago, I used to also squirrel away money, and the reason why I looked here is because I have a bookcase to my left, but I would put... I would squirrel away some money inside a book so that I would forget about it and then open the book and be like, oh, I'm rich. <laughs> but yes, not anymore. <laughs> Let's look down here. It says she squirreled away some snacks for the long trip. So she was able to pack it and take it with her. Next one, it says whenever he gets money for his birthday, he squirrels it away for emergencies. There, there's a mistake, I'm sorry. It says, whenever he gets money for his birthday. Sorry. Next one, number seven, everyone say humongous and make this hand motion. Humongous. Humongous, the synonym is colossal, which means really, 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 really big. And the antonym is tiny. So as you can see here, the synonym isn't just small. We want the smallest of the smallest, so we say tiny here. It is an adjective, and as I've said, it means very large. And so let's look at our example sentence. From the book, it says, The pain was starting to go away, like a humongous wave that crashes with a lot of noise and spray. A big wave. Usually we get big waves 
Oh, I'm not going to say it because it's in my example sentence. But let's look at the example and read together. One, two, three. The humongous burger was so big that it could easily feed a family of four. Wow. That would be a huge burger. Have you guys seen those humongous packs of ramen at the convenience stores? I heard that they have like eight packs in one jumbo ramen. That's humongous. <laughs> Let's look down here. It says the humongous tree in the park had been there for centuries. That's a lot of years. That means that tree is old and very big. Humongous. And the last one, it says, there were humongous waves at the beach because a typhoon was coming. Yes, one time I was walking by him at the beach and the waves were humongous. They were huge. They were like as tall as me, I, feel, I felt like, um, because a typhoon was coming. Because the wind and the currents were very strong. So opposite of humongous, we have the word puny. Not punny. Everyone say puny. Puny. The synonym is feeble and the antonym is strong. So it's an adjective and it doesn't just mean small, but it means small and weak. Because small people can be strong, but puny people, they are small and weak with no power. In our book, it says, not some puny second grader who didn't really belong, so puny meaning very small and weak. Let's read the example together. One, two, three. My newborn kitten is so puny that I feel responsible for protecting him. <gasps> yes, newborn kittens are so small and so precious. I wish I had one. <laughs> Over here, it says the little girl's puny arms could barely lift the heavy box. So this girl, she was struggling to lift the box because her arms were so puny. Next, he felt puny standing next to the tall basketball players. I've met a basketball player in America before, and he is super tall. I'm tall too, but I felt a bit puny next to him. Number nine, the last word on page 109 is the word fluorescent. Everyone say fluorescent. Fluorescent. The synonym is luminous and the antonym is dull. It's an adjective and it means very bright, especially when the light shines on it. So it's kind of, it could also be a bit reflective, I guess. In our book, it says, she had begged her mom to buy foam core and gel pens and fluorescent paper. So it means very, very, very bright paper. Uh, my highlighter here is fluorescent. It's not a dark color, but it's very bright. That's why highlighters are highlighters, because they highlight what we need to mark that's important. It's fluorescent. <laughs> Example, let's read together. One, two, three. Cyclists often wear fluorescent colors so cars can spot them at night. Yes. If you're running in the dark or riding your bike in the dark and wearing all black, that's very dangerous. Cars cannot see you. Uh, so you have to wear bright fluorescent clothing. Next, at the bottom, it says, The room was filled with fluorescent light, making everything look brighter. Usually, if you go to a jewelry store, all the lights are super fluorescent and super bright there. Because it wants all the jewelry to be sparkly and shiny. Next one, it says fluorescent star stickers on the ceiling glowed softly when the lights went out. So I'm sure you have had some, or maybe you haven't, but I definitely had fluorescent star stickers on my ceiling before growing up. All right, let's go to page 110. And number 10 is the word bankroll. Everyone say bankroll. The synonym is finance. And it is a verb. It means to supply money for a person or business or etc. Meaning you're giving that money. You're supporting it with the money. In the book it says, Scott's bankrolling us. His mom keeps a change jar. So we've got plenty. Meaning Scott is 
giving us all the money. Um, example, let's read together. One, two, three. My dad decided to bankroll my new business idea because he believes in me. To say that I had an idea to make a lemonade stand, but I had no money to start. So my dad would bankroll me and he would pay for all the supplies that I needed first. Next one, it says, without anyone to bankroll the project, it couldn't move forward. So later on in real life, if you don't have money for a business, then you can't do it. <laughs> Next one, it says, it took years to find someone willing to bankroll the invention. So sometimes if we have an idea for invention, but we can't make it because we don't have the money for it. So someone has to bankroll us bankroll to supply and support us with money glug, 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 glug. number 11 the word is glug glug <laughs> it's funny glug the synonym is gulp and it is a verb it means to drink something in large mouthfuls so we're not just sipping but we are glugging we're glug, 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 glug. like that sounds um, in our book, it says, pouring himself a cup too, but only part way. He glugged down half his drink. Go, 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 go. And he was done. Large mouthfuls. Example. Please remember to read with me. One, two, three. After his long exercise session, he glugged down some ice cold water. Mm, isn't it? So refreshing after working out or after running or playing and you glug some water. It's the best. Here, it says the toddler glugged down his juice, spilling some on his shirt. So maybe he was such in a hurry. He was like, oh, 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 and then oh, oh, spill. Next one, it says after glugging a whole bottle of soda, the child burped his loudest burp. That would also hurt. I cannot glug soda because that's too much carbonation. It would burn my throat. Don't try it. Number 12. Everyone say optimist. Optimist. The synonym is idealist and the antonym is pessimist. It is a noun and it means a person who always expects good things to happen or things to be successful. Optimists here, they always just think about the good stuff. They think it's everything's going to be a-okay. They don't worry about anything. They just think of the great positives. In our book, it says, that sounded high, even to him. But Evan was an optimist, meaning he always thinks about the good things, not about the bad things. Example, are you ready? Together, one, two, three. I am usually an optimist and try to look at the bright side. Again, so as you can see here, all these people are pessimists. Remember our antonym? The red ones are pessimists, those who think negatively. And our optimist, the only one here who thinks positively. And look down here. It says the optimists believe the weather would clear up for their picnic, even though the forecast said otherwise. So, say that the weather forecast said rain, 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 rain for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But then they thought, hmm, it's okay. I'm sure the weather will get better by Friday. Even though it said that it was going to rain. What is this here? <laughs> Next one, it says, she was known as a classroom optimist, always spreading good vibes. Don't you just have that one classmate in class who's always happy? I would love to be that person. Always happy. It'd be a very hard job to do. Number 13, everyone say chintzy. Chintzy. The synonym is cheap and the antonym is generous. It's an adjective and it means not willing to spend money or give anything away. So you just want to keep everything to yourself. You don't want to spend the money. In the book it says, but size, I wasn't going to be chintzy. They're paying a, while, a whole half a buck for it, and they deserve a full cup. Let me just make sure. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to say a whole cup and not a while cup. Yes, 
It's just a whole. So if you are watching this video, please change this and write whole. W H O L E. It feels on the keyboard O and I are next to each other. <laughs> and let's read the example together. One, two, three. All her guests left early because her chintzy party had no food. That's so sad. She had a party, maybe it was her birthday party, and she didn't have cake, she didn't have food, so everybody just left. Sad. Over here, it says, the hotel provided chintzy amenities despite its high price. So say that uh, we paid, I don't know, $500 for a hotel, but there's no toothbrush, no toothpaste, no shampoo, nothing there. It's so chintzy. Next line, it says his chintzy habits frustrated his friends when they went, to out, went out to eat. So maybe you would go out to eat with your friends and then everyone's eating some spicy rice cake, but you're chintzy and you don't want to spend money. So then maybe the friends are like, oh, let's not invite her again. <laughs> chintzy. Number 14, the last word on page 110 is our word ferociously. Everyone say ferociously. The synonym is aggressively, and the antonym is gently. It's an adverb, and it means in a frightening and violent way. This is my frightening and violent pose. <laughs> in our book, it says, The sun beat down on them so ferociously that it was easy to imagine the sidewalk cracking open and swallowing them whole. So for the sun to beat down on them ferociously means that it's a very, very hot day. And the sun rays are just coming down and just ferociously getting at us. It's super hot. Next, it says the storm. Ooh, let's read together. One, two, three. The storm roared ferociously outside and forced everyone to stay indoors. Yes, I think two weeks ago, three weeks ago, it was ferociously storming outside and there was all this thunder and lightning. I was quite scared at home. Over here, it says the rival teams competed ferociously during the championship game, meaning they weren't just playing normally, but they were ferociously playing in a frightening and violent way, giving all of their strength into the game. Next, it says the wildfire spread ferociously through the mountain. So all the nearby neighborhoods had to evacuate, meaning they had to leave their homes because the mountain was on fire. And it was spreading ferociously, meaning it wasn't just slowly getting bigger. It was getting bigger really quickly, ferociously. Now let's move on to our textbook words on page 111. Number 15 says enable. Everyone say enable. Enable. The synonym is allow and the antonym is prevent. It is a verb and it means to make a person or thing be able to do something or to make something possible. So enable, to make it able to do it. <laughs> And from our textbook, it says, it has enabled millions of people to receive knowledge through books, newspapers, magazines, and other printed formats. Meaning it has allowed millions of people to get all this knowledge. Example, one, two, three. A monkey's tail enables it to keep its balance while swinging through the trees. Yes. Also, a cat's tail also provides and enables it to be balanced. Over here, it says the internet enables people to communicate from anywhere in the world. So yes, with our, um, you know, cacao, with the internet, email, it enables us to keep in contact with people from all over the world. Next, being multilingual, meaning being able to speak different languages, enables us to communicate with a variety of people from different countries. So yes, if I were able to speak Spanish, then I can go somewhere like in Mexico and speak Spanish to them. Or if I was able to speak Japanese, I can go into Japan and it enables me to speak to them also. 
Number 16, everyone say patent. Patent. It is a license and it's a noun meaning an official document granting a right or privilege. It's basically a piece of paper saying this is yours and nobody can copy it. <laughs> Uh, and our book, it says, Samuel F.B. Morse is credited with making the first practical telegraph in 1837. Morse received a U.S. patent for it in 1840. Meaning, Samuel F.B. Morse, you are the one who made the first telegraph. And nobody else can steal your idea unless they pay him for it. Which is a patent. It's a piece of paper saying that you own it. Uh, example, let's read together. One, two, three, four. We applied for a patent so that no other companies could copy our designs. Yes, so say that you made a, a funny shaped card, a card, and you wanted to buy a patent for it, meaning no one else can make a card in that shape that you made. Over here, it says, after months of work, they were finally granted a patent. So it's not easy to get a patent. You need a lawyer, you need to go through all this stuff, you need to prove that you made it. It's very difficult and takes a lot of time. Next one, it says the patent ensures that no one else can copy the idea, as I've said already. Let's move on to number 17. And our word is peak. Everyone say peak. The synonym is height and the antonym is bottom. It's a noun and it means the highest, strongest, or best point, best value, or the best level of the skill. So the highest part, right? What do we call the top of the mountain? The peak. That's how you can remember it. it's the highest. Um, in our book, it says the number of telegrams sent in the United States reached its peak in 1929, meaning that was the highest point. That was when people spent or sent the most telegrams. Example, it says my performance was at its peak, earning me top scores in the race, meaning you did your best. You were at your highest capability and you ran super fast in that race. Over here, it says during the peak of his athletic career, meaning when he was the best at his job, he unfortunately got injured and had to get surgery. Oh no, that's such a sad sentence, Miss Kimberly. Why did you make it like that? I'm so sorry. Um, so when he was at his peak, meaning maybe when he was young, when his muscles were the strongest, when he was the tallest, and he was doing the best, he got hurt. Mm-mm-mm. Next one, it says it was peak hours of traffic and none of the cars could move forward. Oh no. <sighs> peak hours of traffic is horrible. You're just standing there, or not standing. You're just sitting there in your car and you're not moving. Mm -mm -mm. It's the highest time of traffic. And number 18, the word is transmit. Everyone say transmit. Uh, the synonym is communicate, and it is a verb. It means to send or cause to go from one person to a place to another. So from one place to another place. Transmit. In our book, it says the number of telegrams sent in the United States reached its peak in 1929, when more than 200 million were transmitted, meaning there were 200 million different telegrams going back and forth back and forth. Example, let's read together. One, two, three, four. War pigeons were used during World War II to transmit messages to allies. Can you believe that? Pigeons were used a long time ago to carry our mail. But now they just play in the sidewalk. <laughs> let's look over here. It says they transmitted the message using Morse code. Morse code meaning, as we know, dun, 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 dun. I don't know Morse code though. <laughs> Next one, it says the virus can transmit easily through physical contact. So if I have a cold and I <coughs> cough in my hands and I go, hi, 
and I touch your face, then you touch your nose, you may be sick because my virus was able to be transmitted to you. <laughs> Number 19, let's go to the next page. 112, our word is offer. Everyone say offer. The synonym is provide and the antonym is withhold. It is a verb and it means to give someone the opportunity to accept or take something. So we're offering them. You want to take it? No? No? Let's read the example together. One, two. I offer to help when there were not enough volunteers. So you're giving them the opportunity to accept your help. Do you need my help? I can help you. Over here, it says the teacher offered all the students an opportunity for extra credit. I loved it when my teacher gave me extra credit at school um, so that I can bring my grades up. Next one, it says, my baby sister offered me some of her snack when I was crying. So cute. I'm crying here. And the baby sister comes over. She's like, mm, you want some snack? <laughs> and I said, thank you. And stop crying. Number 20, our last word is aid. Everyone say aid. The synonym is assistance. And the antonym is harm. It's a noun and it means help that a person needs especially to perform a particular task so it's another word for help let's read the example one two three volunteers offer aid to elderly elderly citizens who cannot walk freely so we're helping them we offer them help hey our password was offered this sentence has two of the vocabulary words in one sentence Good job. <laughs> Over here, it says medical aid quickly arrived to the scene of the car accident, meaning medical help, meaning those ambulances, they came quickly to help you. Next one, it says I couldn't get out of bed without the aid of my alarm clock. So without the help of my alarm clock, I also will probably snooze in all day. <laughs> aid. Very good job, everyone. We're done. Let's go to the mission. My mission for vocabulary has been the same, but please continue. Write three sentences using three different vocabulary words from this week. Underline the vocabulary word, write your name, class, and the week, please. Because I'm getting confused. So please make sure you write down the week name. Now it's time for you to review and self-study. This is to help with your contextual mastery. So review all of the words again. Read it out loud because I know some of you are not reading with me during the video, which breaks my heart. I wish you would read with me. And then also remember to complete your vocabulary homework pages on page 113 and 114. And we're done with this video. I'll see you in the next video when we go over the lemonade war. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!